Pastor Ed here with Daily Devotions for Wednesday, February the 15th, 2023. We continue to look at our gospel reading from last Sunday, Matthew 8, 1 through 17. The three healing stories, the story of the leper, the story of the Roman centurion's slave, and then also the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. I'm going to read for you today um, verses 1 through 4 and then say a little bit something about that particular healing miracle. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him, and there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And then Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest, and after the gift that Moses, after the, and after the gift that Moses commanded um, as a testimony to them. And so that was the the ritual that uh, you went before the priest to show that you were uh, that that you were um, clean, that you were healed. Um, scholars point out the fact that the leprosy that we know that's that's technically I think called Hansen's disease, the severe leprosy that that we're aware of, um, may not be what they're talking about here. Really, a, a whole variety of skin ailments were referred to as leprosy in Jesus's day. It doesn't make them any less significant um, or uh, or whatever and and because of uh, the, the lack of knowledge for sure um, there was a, a general feeling that um, you know that it was contagious and and so they were ostracized and um, with the severe forms of leprosy that Hansen's disease um, that has something that's even come down to to modern times there's a story about dr. Paul uh, W brand uh, a noted leprosy expert um, he was the chief at one point of the rehabilitation branch of a hospital uh, for lepers in Carville, Louisiana. And he had a frightening experience one night when he thought that he had contracted leprosy. He arrived in London after an exhausting transatlantic ocean trip and a long train ride from the English coast. He was getting ready for bed, had taken off his shoes, and as he pulled off a sock, he discovered there was no feeling in his heel. To most anyone else, this discovery would have meant very little momentary numbness. But Dr. Brand was world famous for his restorative surgery on lepers in India. He had convinced himself and his staff at the Leprosarium, that's what the hospital for lepers apparently is called, uh, that there was no danger of infection from leprosy after it reached a certain stage, but this numbness in his heel terrified him. In her biography of Dr. Brand, Ten Fingers for God, Dorothy Clark Wilson says he rose mechanically, found a pin, sat down again, and pricked the small area below his ankle, he felt no pain. He thrust the pin deeper until a speck of blood showed. Still, he felt nothing. He supposed, like others, workers with leprosy, uh, he had always half expected it. Uh, in the beginning, probably not a day had gone by without the automatic searching of his body for the telltale patch, the numbed area of skin. All that night, the great orthopedic surgeon tried to imagine his new life as a leper, an outcast, his medical staff's confidence in their immunity shattered by his disaster and the forced separation from his family. As night receded, he yielded to hope, and in the morning with clinical objectivity, with steady fingers, he buried the skin below his ankle, jabbed in the pin, and yelled. Blessed was the sensation of pain. He realized that during the long train ride, sitting immobile, he had probably numbed a nerve. And from then on, whenever Dr. Brand cut his finger, turned an angle, even when he suffered from agonizing nausea as his whole body reacted in violent self-protection from some kind of mushroom poisoning, he was to respond with fervent gratitude, thank God for pain. And so I, I guess that story just illustrates the seriousness of, of that type of leprosy um, and uh, also reminds me of another story, a famous story, of someone who, uh, um, some decades before Dr. Brand, who also uh, had come to work with lepers. Um, apparently, if you go to Hawaii and ask around, you're likely to hear the story of the priest uh, who, was who was sent to minister to the lepers who lived on an island, lo on an isolated island in the Hawaiian chain. His his name was Father Damien. The entire island had been set aside as a, a leper colony, and this Father Damien had gone there to do his best to minister to the scorned and sickly people who lived there. For years, he, he reached out to them as best he could, 
um, to share with them the love of Christ, never connected, though, with the people in a way that led them to respond to his ministry. And so after a long but unsuccessful period of pastoring, he decided to, to give it up. He sent word to the people of Oahu to send a boat to take him away from the colony and to send someone else to take his place. Well, on the Sunday morning when the boat was scheduled to arrive, the, as the priest uh, stood there waiting on the dock, he happened to look down at his hands and he noticed several white spots. He suddenly realized that he himself had become a leper. He wouldn't be able to take the boat to Oahu now, for he also belonged to the colony. And so he left the dock and slowly walked up the hill toward the little church that he had tried so uh, faithfully to serve. And when he arrived at the church some two hours later, he was amazed to find that for the first time the church was filled with people. They had heard about what had happened to him, and they now came to hear their priest. He was no longer an outsider. In other words, he had become one of them. And the priest stayed on to minister to lepers for the rest of his life, touched thousands with Christ's love in the years that followed. It reminds me, especially in this Gospel of Matthew, um, that um, when the birth of Jesus was... Um, Announced by the angel, they said to, the angel said to name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Jesus came to be with us. And so the um, story of, of Jesus' baptism we've always talked about is how he immersed himself into the human condition. He was, he was fully God, but he was also fully human. And he took on our suffering and he took on our um, diseases and he was willing to... Um, do all that on our behalf. So um, in this instance, in this story of, of the leper, we see a Jesus who's unafraid to put himself in close proximity, to reach out, to touch the leper, to heal him, just as in every other situation, Jesus came to heal and to be with his people. Well, we'll continue to talk about Jesus's healing tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.